It's the Traveler. And the Almighty Shogun! How might I be of assistance, Your Excellency? I wish to borrow a tea set from the Yashiro Commission. Oh, uh, sure. I'll fetch that for you right away. Uh, please step into the courtyard and have a rest, Almighty Shogun. Oh, and I'll inform my lord about your visit immediately. Ah, and the tea set. I'll bring that here as soon as it's ready. Be at ease. I'm not here to see Commissioner Kamisato. Actually, I'd prefer to spend this time chatting with the Traveler. Please, fetch the tea set at your convenience. No, no, no. I am your humble servant. I daren't think of my own convenience when the Almighty Shogun graces me with her presence. I'll deal with it right away. Well, it's not often we have the chance to chat. I'm sure you must have a lot of questions. Right. Paimon wanted to ask that too. The Almighty Shogun that he described didn't sound anything like you at all. I seldom had the time to drink tea. <laughs> Any free time I had was spent practicing martial arts. So, in the vast majority of cases, the one he made tea for was the former Electro Archon, who was also my sister, Raiden Makoto. He may well have had an inkling about there being two Raiden Shoguns, but he always acted as if he was completely unaware of it. The philosophy of life that he shared with us just now, that was Makoto's view on reality. She always saw things that way. You and Makoto had pretty different views, huh? Indeed we did. It was the biggest difference between us. In her eyes, the most precious things in this world were dreams. The yearning for a better future held by living beings. They are similar, but not identical. When you came charging into the plain of Euthymia, I saw human aspirations light up the sky far above in the form of countless stars. This somewhat shook me. Now, it seems like she was right. While I took the wayward path. Wow, there sure was a lot going on. I saw a bigger picture than I did. In her view, a dream is more imaginary, more abstract than an ambition. An ambition is a yearning for something material or a concrete outcome. It is finite in nature and will be replaced by a new ambition in due course. Makoto was more concerned with the force that drives humans to constantly generate new ambitions in the first place. It is something innate, rooted in instinct. In other words, it is something eternal. That's... Uh, quite a lot to take in. To put it simply, Makoto wasn't concerned about outcomes. I didn't understand at the time. How can we say that we are maintaining eternity when things are constantly moving forward and evolving? I suppose what it comes down to is the definition of eternity she set out with. Yes, it does. <laughs> I always thought that she must have grasped some elusive, arcane wisdom to arrive at the conclusions she did. But in the last analysis, Makoto's philosophy was, on the surface at least, an elegantly simple one. Notwithstanding that it was also the more prudent choice, based on a more mature, far-sighted outlook. Do you feel you're starting to understand her better now? You have already witnessed my previous views on eternity. But now... I no longer cling to what was lost. <laughs> I suppose that means our differences have been reconciled. Almighty Shogun, I found a tea set. This one in particular should be fit for your Excellency's use. It's quite beautiful. Thank you. You are too kind. A humble servant such as I does not deserve the gratitude of the Almighty Shogun. It's all good, sir. She's actually pretty chill. 
Let us return. We ought not keep Furuyama waiting too long.